We announced some stuff today. We, we did. We yes. did. It happened. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you guys think of the keynote? <laughs> That's right. I like that. I didn't even have to have twice. Everyone's so excited. I yeah. love it. Well, today yeah. we, have, uh, we have a lot of exciting stuff to talk about on the mobile space. Uh, and it's going to blend very nicely with what uh, we saw in the keynote. I like that. I should probably change right. the PowerPoints, huh? All right, yes, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's us. Woo. All right. So if you don't know, this is Miguel. He's Hello. a lovely, lovely human being that has <laughs> graced our presence on stage multiple times here at Build. Uh, and I mean, this is super exciting for me. This is not our first time on stage. Build two years ago, we showed off some amazing applications yes. that we built from scratch with the team uh, at Xamarin. And what I love uh, about being a Xamarin developer for nearly seven years now is really that we are continually making it fast, easy, and fun to make great mobile apps. But if people don't know you, Miguel, like, like who, are, who are you? This distinguished I, engineer, it's amazing. I, I, run the engineering, I run the engineering team uh, for uh, the Xamarin platform and Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, and, uh, and I think we have a lot of interesting things to, uh, to tell you about today, work that we've done in the last year. So let's get started on that. Uh, our motto uh, since the Xamarin days is we want to make it uh, we want you guys to enjoy building uh, native applications and mobile applications. Yeah. And that's what's our motto. That's what drives us. That's what we want to do. And uh, sometimes the experience is not as delightful as we want it to do. So uh, to be. So there's a couple of things that uh, we focused on the last year. Uh, we got your feedback. We listened to your feedback. And we've been working on these things for the last year. So we wanted to address three classes of problems. The first one is how to get uh, how get to get a good, reliable installation in your machine with everything that you need, right? You told us you used too much space. You told us that uh, it takes forever to install. You told us that the defaults were not right and you had to tweak things. So we, we worked on that. The second piece that we wanted to get to is right now when you say, I'm going to build a mobile application with Xamarin, you got to learn some, you got to download the software, you got to install the software, you got to read some controls, you got to launch Visual Studio, you got to launch this thing, set up the emulator. It's a long process. So right now, our onboarding experience, you needed to be committed to the mobile platform, and you couldn't get an immediate feedback and get an immediate feel for what it is to build a mobile app. So we wanted to change that. We wanted to get you from zero to, to a live application on your machine in as little time few, as possible. Yeah, a few minutes, really. And yeah. right now, it's, we, are at, uh, we went from like 30 minutes to? I tweeted, so I tweeted originally. I did, when I installed Visual Studio 2017 the first time, I was installing about 45 gigs. I had a bunch of workloads, right? Mm -hmm. and it took over a half an hour. I did our new minimal installation just to try it out uh, with just the Xamarin workload. I installed Visual Studio 2017 Enterprise Edition in under five minutes, and I had my first app deployed on the Xamarin Live Player in under six. In so only six minutes. Six minutes. Yes. So and it only took five gigabytes of space, including all those prerequisites and requirements that Visual Studio requires. Right. So, five gigs, thirty so, to five. So the idea now is that while you go to launch and you're you know you're having your sandwich, you can very quickly go from you download this thing, you have your sandwich. If, before the sandwich is over and the meal is over, you get your first mobile app on the screen. So. We did a piece. We improved our templates. Yep. Uh, we wanted to give you more guidance, so we improved our templates. We added backends, because a lot of you are building mobile apps that talk to a backend, so we made it very easy to create the backend with .NET Core, with amazing web API, amazing mm -hmm. web support for web applications. And also, a lot of you have told us, I got to provision my phone, uh, the certificate, the signing, the thing, the, the portal, the, enlighten, the, yeah. enlighten, the enlisting, the team, the, uh, the, the wild card, why? So we fixed this, and we're going to talk about that today. Um, and also, the third piece, the third pillar mm -hmm. is uh, C Sharp has always lived in this world of edit, compile, deploy, run, the thing. It's a cycle, right? It's a cycle. And compiled languages don't get the benefit of, uh, that a lot of web developers get. You type a little thing, hit reload, uh, it's there, save, reload, save, reload. So we're bringing save, reload to mobile. Yeah. Live coding. You'll see it today. Um, you'll still be in the keynote, but we're bringing it, we're making it real. And also, when you're finally building a large application, we also wanted to reduce the executable sizes. We wanted to improve the performance and reduce the deployment time. So we've worked on all of these things. So let's get started with the most exciting thing. Uh, Getting they're, all, you, they're all exciting things, and we're going to talk about all of them. Yeah. But from zero to, from zero to okay. mobile app in 60 seconds. <laughs> Go. Go. All right, let me switch over here. So I'm over on seven. Perfect. That, that's the number of this thing. So essentially what I have here is Visual Studio 2017 on my Surface Book. Uh, and I'm just uh, screen mirroring uh, over AirPlay 
my actual iOS device. Now, I've already paired this ahead of time uh, to Visual Studio 2017. So I've installed the Xamarin Player application. It's available on the App Store today for both iOS and Android. So that's one thing that you didn't see earlier. So when you come in under Tools, there's the Live Player option. And what you'll want to do is first pair your device. So under Manage Devices, you're going to see here that I've paired both my Nexus 6 and my iPhone. And it'll pick up the name of your device. You can scan a QR code, and it'll immediately pair over there. If you had just literally scanned this in real time, it would do that. Please don't do that. We're doing it live. Um, this is all real codes. So when you do that, uh, I've set my iOS project here as my startup. And notice that this was kind of file, new application, backend with an ASP.NET Core backend. I have some .NET standard libraries in here. Uh, and I have my iOS application. Now, this is a Xamarin Forms application. So I have all of my XAML here that will scaffold across iOS, Android, and Windows applications and lay down the native controls. So here I have all my models and views, and about 99% of the code here is shared. So all I need to do, actually, is just hit debug, and then boom, it just shows up. Like, no, no magic, it just shows up. Well, this, it's bananas. But one thing to note, this is not the iOS simulator. We are mirroring the string from the real device. Yeah, that's right here. If There's I no shake simulator. It, you can see the feedback comes up. That, that, that happens. Uh, and that's really cool. So now what's great is that I'm in a debug session, just like I'm debugging any of my application. It didn't have to do anything. It just sent it over there, and boom, good to go. So if I want to tap on here, I can go over. And this is real data binding happening, everything. All my real code is being executed. So when I add a new item, I can see here uh, I've added some defaults here of um, uh, build 2017. The screen mirror is a little bit slow, so it does like, There's a little there. lag, yeah. But I have an add location button, so maybe I want to add the location here. Uh, so when I do that, it's actually going to hit a breakpoint uh, inside of Visual Studio. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually calling into uh, some native code that I wrote here. So if I actually go to the implementation, we can see I'm actually calling into core location, the actual iOS API. So it's not just the user interface. That's important uh, to realize. Uh, so as I continue on here, we'll see Visual Studio. There we go. We should come back. And my location should maybe update. We'll see. There we go. There is no what. Well, there we go. So there's latitude. So I'm actually getting real IntelliSense. I'm really debugging into my application. You know what I mean? This is important. So you can get your, your stacks. You can get your invariables. You can kind of continue to develop like you've normally developed. Like, that's the experience we want to do. And then it updates on the screen. Yep. Right? So there we go. Now, if I hit Save, I've set another breakpoint. You can investigate other objects. You can look at all your code. And here I'm going to pop back to the main screen. The item gets added. You can see I've selfishly plugged all of my podcasts um, and my blog in this list. Very Go nice. figure. That's what happens when you let me create the application. All right. So you can do all this stuff. It's a real application running live, which is pretty bananas. So the second part that Terry demoed this morning was this kind of live uh, run experience. So what I can do here is under the Xamarin Live, I can tap on any page. So here's this item page. And when I go into the Xamarin Live player, I can say Live Run Current View. And I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of this and why this is so important. And when I do that, it just sends the current view. Look, there's no Chrome. There's nothing like that. It is the current view that I'm currently um, updating. So that means uh, if I come into my, my tooltip over here, I can go up and, and add, you know, I, I really like Terry added a very fancy uh, thing over here. And then it just updates. There it is. I didn't hit any buttons, didn't do anything. It just updates. Uh, if I want to come in and I want that to be uh, red, see, I'm still actually getting my IntelliSense. I'm just modifying my code. And when the buffer is ready uh, here, it just, boom, it updates automatically. So I don't have to do anything. I can modify the XAML. I can modify C Sharp code. I have a question. Anything. Did you hit save? I didn't hit any save at all. I just typed some code. So let, let me type it. Let me type okay. it. So we're oh, going to count the goodness. fingers. So one finger. Right? So you see that I'm not, I'm not tricking this. OK. G R E E N. Boom. I didn't press Control S. Very nice. Very nice. OK. Uh, because I have to say, I thought you had to hit Control. No, S. yeah, I'm, I'm in that. Sorry. I'm in that uh, always Control S state of mind. So that's super cool, and I can update anything. Now let me show you what this would look like, of course, on an Android device. So I think that's super important to show off. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down, and let's go ahead and stop uh, this AirPlay over here. Turn that off. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and screen mirror my Android device over here uh, with Visor, which is a great, great, uh, awesome application. It's actually built in Seattle, I think. It is. Yes. 
it is. Oh, all best things come from Seattle, including the best coffee across the street at Monorail Espresso. Um, bring cash, it's mm. cash only, burnt cream latte. Uh, pro tip, just pro tip. So I'm gonna set Android as the startup and realize that I actually have this uh, plugged in, so I see my device, but see it's named the Nexus 6 player, so when I tap on that, I go ahead and, of course, launch the Xamarin Player application, go figure. Uh, this application uh, here, the Xamarin Player application, was, of course, built with Xamarin, Xamarin Forms specifically. And I got to work on it, which is really cool. So let me go ahead and find my debug menu, Visual Studio Hide and Stuff. I hit debug, and now it's going to connect right over here because I've already paired it. And it's going to take a few seconds uh, and essentially send all my bits across the magical network that all of our friends here have connected to. And probably not rotate it. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now we're in debug mode. Boom, there it is with all of Miguel's beautiful changes that we saw. I can tap on an item, I can go back and forth, I can add a new item, I can hit save, and I'm hitting the same breakpoints that I did over on iOS. Pretty cool, so no matter if you have an iOS or Android device, that's all you need, but wait. Because I'm gonna show you this that you didn't see this morning, if I can figure out what number this is. Eight, Which, which one are you nine, looking for? Nope, not that one. There were stickers yesterday. Nope, there were there stickers. There are no stickers six. today. Is it six? Okay, cool, awesome. So here's what I have. I have Visual Studio for Mac, because of course, if you're a Mac developer, we want to have the same exact experience that I just showed you. So I have a different project here. Uh, I showed you Xamarin Forms, but I wanted to show you a Xamarin native application. Uh, this is a master detail application. I, I did some code behind here. Uh, so what's cool is I've actually come in here. I can see that I have uh, the, my iPad paired here. In fact, if you go into your devices, you're gonna see a very similar setup. Uh, here, I'm just uh, screen mirroring my iPad. I'm gonna hit run, and I have a full master detail application. It's very simple, I just add a bunch of items. I can go ahead and set the screen inside of here. I can modify some things around. What's cool is I can come into uh, the single screen, though, and modify this as well. So when I go into run, hi, Miguel. This is new to me, guys. Yeah, this is paired I've never seen this demo best. before. So here I've populated this list that you're gonna see over here. I'm just gonna rotate it. There we go. So you want to hold it? Yeah, can you hold that? Yeah. Right. Uh, Frank, my good friend Frank, he ha you know how all of your Lyft and Uber drivers, they have that, like, or even me, have that like the thing that holds your phone? He has this awesome setup where his phone was just like right there. Is this Frank Kruger? You know the Frank Kruger. Frank Kruger is the engine behind this. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I'm just going to set the uh, uh, background color here. Yeah, uh, always a favorite. New color. It's a, it's a great it's a property great to use. And uh, then, boom, then it updates, right, on an iPad. That's pretty cool. But then you're like, cool, you can change your color, but can you build something? Yes, I can. So here's what I'm gonna do, um, is I'm gonna come over uh, into another view here uh, that I've created, and I'm gonna say, let's live debug this view, and it's blank, that's boring, so you know I'm gonna set the background color right here to my background. All right, so I'm live uh, coding here. Here we go, Visual Studio is gonna I'm on a MacBook Adorable, so you got to give it a few what seconds. What is a MacBook Adorable? That's that, it's a rose gold. It's a rose Mac. It's a, okay. it's a rose gold Mac, and right. now it's purple. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first draw some stuff. So I'm going to come down mm -hmm. here. You're going to be impressed by my iOS skills. And I'm going to first come down, I'm going to get my contacts text here. So I'm doing a custom control where I want to draw a ball around. You, you are very bold. I mean, uh, I would cut and paste this, but all right. Nope, get That's current good. context. It's happening. Uh, we're going to say background dot set color, boom. And then we're gonna say UI color dot white. Mm -hmm. There we go, dot. Mm, set color, yeah. no? No. Nope. Set background, set fill? Set fill, yeah, no? you know. There we go. Oh, we probably need to do a uh, C dot fill rect of said rectangle, so I fill the background appropriately. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll just fill an mm -hmm. ellipses, and mm -hmm. we'll say new. Jesus, man. I know. New well, what you're saying, what you're saying right now is we just changed the defaults on code completion on it's, Visual it's Studio changing, for Mac. It's blowing my mind. To match the ones on Windows. And if you're a Windows, uh, if you're a Mac user, uh, you, there's, so what's happening right now is, is uh, James is getting adjusted. I'm getting adjusted. It's very... Yes. All right. And you can see I'm actually writing tons of typos, and yet the application is still working. Now I have oh, a Oh, it is. It is. Oh, it's Jesus. Totally All right. There's a ball. Okay, you guys should... And should that, more code. Why not? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say... I'm going to get my touch, and I'm going to say touches that are passed in dot uh, location. Oop, touch, or sorry, touches. I think I got to that. To like array, 
Okay. Uh, and we have to cast these things to a UI touch thingy, because why not? Frank told me to do that. He said it'd be a cool demo. Uh, he also told me not to type all this code, but it's okay. Dot touch, uh, dot location and view, and we'll say this, boom. Uh, so now what happens oh. is when I come here and I just, and I just, and I just, uh, did I do it wrong? Help me. Grab and touch this. I did set, set, oh, set needs, set needs display. display. Duh. See, I wrote some code, and when you write the code not live, then boom, it's a no, all right, so then no, no, move it, and then it updates. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, so I, I, am, I, am, I am continuously just iterating on my application. It's Xamarin Form, Xamarin Native, iOS, Android, custom views. is spectacular. That's my demos. Boom. Boom. All right. Boom. That has been a huge undertaking. We know you're going to love it. We have documentation. The apps are live in the App Store for both iOS and Android. Uh, we want your feedback. There's literally a feedback button. We have an email that comes directly into my inbox. I don't know why I did that. Uh, it was a bad idea, but let me know. I promise to respond to uh, some of them. Alice, I will forward them to Miguel, and he will handle yes. it from there. Well, I think that oh, this capability goodness. is unique right now to, uh, to, the, uh, to Visual Studio. It's a capability that nobody else has, this live Android development, iOS development, live development compilation, access to NuGets, all this technology. Yeah. Um, we're beginning. It's going to only get better. So this is a preview. We want to hear your feedback. So let's go back to some of the things that we're doing now. Uh, is that the Boom. on fundamental improvement? So we have a lot of things that we've been doing in the last year, and we want to share some of those. And we're going to go very quickly here. So first of all, we're very proud of our tradition of supporting the Android and iOS SDKs the day that they come out. And we're also very proud that everything that you can do with Swift, Java, or Objective-C, you can also do with C Sharp and F Sharp. In fact, let me tell you a little secret. These players, these players that you just see live, were built with F Sharp. So some of us love F Sharp, and that's what we used to build it. So, How many F Sharp developers? All right. <laughs> that we need to so, be F Sharp proud, gentlemen. Every time right. I see F Sharp, it blows my mind. It's unbelievable. I'm going to just keep writing C Sharp. That's what I keep telling Frank. All right. It's so good. You know, All right. piping things. So I there's a couple of things that we did this year. Uh, we heard your feedback. You, wanna, you, want, you want to more easily consume third-party applications from Android, so from the Android ecosystem. We improved our Java binding technology. You still need to do a little bit of work because Java does not have as much rich information as C Sharp. Now, you can opt to not do the work, but then you'll be limited like the Java people are. So if you want to have a more <laughs> delightful, no, I'm not trying to make fun of Java, I guess. I'm not trying to make fun. What I say is, if you want to have a more delightful API binding, you can do a little work, uh, extra work, but it is optional. With iOS, we, in the last year, we implemented a CocoaPods importer. That means that you can take a CocoaPods and it will import it. And again, there is a situation here where Objective-C is a little bit ambiguous. So two things. A, you can get a raw API. It's just not going to be delightful unless you tune it a little bit and we have nice annotations for you to tune it. So it's really, do you want a tuned API, or you want just to call the damn method, right? All right, they're probably going to bleep that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and the thing that we're working on, uh, there's a different internal code name, but I like this one more. It's called the Swift Netifier. And this one is fully automated because Swift is a much richer language and has richer metadata, mm. we can do a complete machine mapping. There is no human intervention. So, so Swift Netifier will come later this summer, yeah. and we can import Swift libraries as is, as .NET APIs. And I love this because that's the number one thing developers ask when I talk to them. And even as myself, as a Xamarin developer for the last mm -hmm. seven, seven years, and shipping apps, as I go out, it's like, well, what about if I find this thing on GitHub, I could do this thing. Yes. If you go to my GitHub, on James Montemagno's GitHub, you'll see me rewrite all the, you know, uppercase a bunch of Java. And that's a huge perk, because this is really saying that, listen, we have access to all those APIs. We have, yeah. you have them all in C Sharp. So if you wanted to rewrite them, that's fine. I like doing that sometimes. Yes. And that, I don't got time anymore, so Swift innate that, and Java innate that. that, yes. And get it there, right? And I think that's a huge win. 
that I think we're, you're going to love. So, I mean, we've made it yeah. easier and easier, and just one click, go. Yeah, I have a couple of favorite yeah. Swift libraries that I would like to use, and we're using them for testing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, very nice. All right, uh, the next thing is, as I mentioned yesterday, we support fully everything that you can do with Apple extensions. So it's not only about building the app. A lot of people think it's all about building the app. When you're building an app these days, you're building a, really an experience that spans the app and a lot of pieces where you connect and interoperate with the rest of the operating system. We fully support them for Mac and iOS. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this year we introduced multi-process debugging. And usually what you have is you have a main application and all these other extensions, and they run as separate processes. It is not a single process. You have your main application, your today contact, your other thing, and sometimes they need to share data. They need to communicate with each other, maybe delegate some data, maybe queue some data to be uploaded to the yeah, server. Like you're getting the GPS, yes. but that needs to go through your phone, not the watch, even older exactly. watch. Exactly. So you have all these extensions talking to each other, and we're bringing the Visual Studio capability that is very unique to do multi-process debugging to iOS and Android. So you can set breakpoints, you can explore what happens between these apps, but also we can do this across the web, and you can debug your .NET Core application. So you can debug your backend. We showed that yesterday. Now this brings me to the next piece. This has been, when we launched extension support last year, it looked a little bit like this. You have your Xamarin app, and you have your Xamarin runtime. Mm -hmm. You have your extension and your Xamarin runtime. You have your extension too and your Xamarin runtime. And you have a copy of everything that you use. Which is not bad if you have one extension or something like yeah. that, but you ask Frankie, he's got like 18 extensions. Exactly. Which means there's 18 runtimes. Now, they're not the same runtime. Mm. The main application might be doing HTTP transactions. So we include, our linker technology includes the HTTP I text. call it like you if, you, how many, if you don't know what the linker is, it's one of my favorite things, is because I think of .NET as this huge tree, right? Yeah. And that's how I describe the linker, because it's a very, you can get real finesse with the linker. Think of this tree of this beautiful, you're playing Legend of Zelda, and there's apples up there, and you just want to grab them all. But you, you could just shake the tree, and the good one, the bad ones will fall away, and the good ones will stay. So your .NET are now happens apples. To me. All of your APIs are up there, and then you take that tree when you compile your app and you shake it, right? And all the APIs that you don't use get stripped out, and that's the linker. Did I describe that correctly? More or less. James Perfect. is my divine beast. <laughs> I, I'm a high, mid to high level developer, people. Yeah. I say I hit compile, it works. It works. Cares. But let me, let me explain this. So James is my divine beast. Let's start there. And, <laughs> am I uh, like a Rita or am I like, am I going? Both. Uh, so for example, let's say that the main application uses the HTTP stack, so we put the HTTP stack there. Now the extension doesn't need to use the HTTP stack. Instead, it needs to use uh, some floating point. I don't know why, but no, some uh, uh, tensor flow to do some machine learning. I don't know why you would do that, but that's what you do. As you want to. So these runtimes are not identical. Some capabilities will be in one and some capabilities will be the other, but you end up replicating a lot of code. Mm -hmm. So we just launched support for a cross linker. So the linker no longer links a single application. The linker now has full visibility into every component that you're shipping with your app. And it knows that you're going to need the HTTP stack here, the TensorFlow library, the whatever other library, and then it's going to bring those in in a shared runtime, reducing the executable sizes. So these are three uh, little boxes, which is what my artistic skill gave me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, to me, to me. But if you have a, 10 yeah. extensions, yeah. it adds up. Yeah, and this to me is huge because when I talk to developers, you go into emerging markets and where Wi-Fi or cell data is so expensive, you want to have just the smallest package uh, that you deliver to the app store. And, and this is great. Uh, when I saw this slide, it was the first time that we did it. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I was like, what, we have that? And it blew my mind. Even more than the live players. Yeah. So, so, well, maybe not more than the live all right. players, but pretty cool. Let me move to the next point. This is a. This Miguel's is a, sick of my. This is a. That's what I'm hearing. No, no. This oh, is, okay. This is a. This is a sore Ugh. point. This is a sore point for every mobile developer, in particular for Xamarin developers. It's been a painful point, and I want to address it uh, up front. Uh, if you guys had to uh, provision a device. Raise and, your hand uh, first. Oh, you I'm know sorry, how I'm that. Sorry, it's not our fault. It's not. But our it fault. is our problem. It is not uh. our fault, but it is our problem. And you've gone through our documentation, and it's a very detailed, beautiful document, about 40 pages long, <laughs> that walks you through the process. And mm -hmm. again, we got you covered with the live player, but eventually you will have to do this because you will have to do publish your app, you're going to have to get your entitlements, you're going to have to get it into the store, you're going to have to do the beta testing, you have to do this. And we've decided to fix this problem once and for all. So uh, James, let's go for a demo of our Fastlane integration. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. I'm so so this is, we'll automate the whole process using the open source project Fastlane. 
So yeah, we've integrated Fastlane. I didn't know too much about Fastlane, so I've installed the Fastlane tools here on my uh, Mac OS machine. This is no longer the MacBook, adorable. It is closed, needs a nap. Uh, this is my full MacBook Pro uh, 2013 model. So it's great, I'm excited. Now this has been the bane of my existence when I want to publish an application <coughs> to Apple. Uh, not even just publishing, I want to get it on a, on a device and I want to access like HealthKit, I want to you know, mm -hmm. do my entitlements, I want to do a whole bunch of stuff or test push notifications. You need the full capabilities there. So you got to come in, you got to create an app identifier, you got to register a device, you got a provisioning profile, then you got to do it all over again. And heaven forbid that you forget to export your P12 cert and you don't put that on OneDrive and then you get a new machine, and then you got to do it all over again, and it's terrible. And then you've got to revoke the certificate, you Ugh. revoke the app, you terminate it. And if you're in a team, there's always this guy that clicks fix issue. No, don't do, no, no, don't do that. And you give him admin rights because you figure you don't want to deal with the registration. I swear I didn't do it last year at Evolve. It wasn't my fault. Well, it happened two years ago to us. It did. We published a Kinder chat, oh, and yeah. somebody else in the team is like, I can run my app, fix issue. And it nuked the whole app. Uh, after, I don't, the yeah. day after the app was never, what, what happened? What happened? Someone click fix the issue. I don't trust a fi the magic fix button. <laughs> this is great. All right. All right, so here we go. So uh, this, is, this is my MacBook Adorable here. I have one register for production and that, but I'm on my MacBook Pro. I want to get up and running. Uh, I'm gonna just going to go ahead and say new project. And I have my, that same iPhone uh, mm -hmm. over here. So I'm going to go and create just a new iOS application, single view app. Uh, here we go. And I'm going to call this build... 2017, awesome app. I, I would just assume maybe I didn't register that. Now here is new, let me zoom in, whoa, zoom technology. I can select my team, and you can see uh, here that Miguel has given me a lot of Xamarin um, power, but we're not gonna use that account because we don't wanna <laughs> mess anything up. We don't wanna do so that. I'm gonna use my personal account because that's great to do uh, live. So, yep. And uh, here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and create this app, hit next. Now that's new, selecting a team. I've logged in with my Apple account. It knows this stuff on my machine. I'm good to go. Uh, and I'm just going to hit go and zoom back out. So this is just file, new application. And, and I've gone through this process uh, a bunch of times where I want to put it on a physical device. So uh, I have my device plugged in. I'm going to put it uh, here. There's all my simulators. There's my iPhone, and I'm like so excited for development, and then I hit go, and it's gonna compile. I'm like, whoa, it's compiling, and it's like, it's happening. It is it, happening, it's yes. Ha yep, you can, look, it's, it's happening. I wish when This is a new nice pop-up that we've added. I don't know if you noticed, yeah, this it's a is, nice touch. We, I like uh, spinning things. Oh, it moved, ooh. And then, I get, oh, it wants my keychain all allow. and go, okay, sure. All right, so it's signing your application. Oh, it's already installed it. Oh, no, there we go. It couldn't do it. Oh, You know why? why? And look at, look at how why? close it got. It got so It got close, so close. And then it's like, no, you know why? Because I don't have a certificate, and this machine's not registered to put on a device. All right, let's read the 40-page document. OK, so I'm going to go, and we're going to Google this really quick. Um, and we're going to go Xamarin. You were in Google already. iOS, device Pro provisioning. And of then, course, it's a purple link. Uh, no, this is a, yeah, yep, there it not is. Not a purple link. Oh, you've not been Googling this. That's because I got fast lanes. So then I go in and I'm like, uh, I give up. Uh, Miguel. Okay, All right, so I'll build a, I'll build a, a web app. So here's what you do. You go into options, and uh, you go down into your bundle signing. And there's this team. I'm going to zoom in real close for you here. Here's that team I selected. And it's gone out, and it said, hey, you don't have any signing identity. And a signing identity is a machine that you're building on. And it stores a cert into your key store. And uh, I'm going to just let it do it. So it's going to register my machine. Yeah, essentially, you don't need to know about this crypto stuff. You select the first one that is not selected. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's what I learned when, they, when I walked through the demo. It, it created it. In fact, I can uh, prove this to you when I go back to development, and, and there's my new machine. Nice. Well, didn't, I'm just going to go back and forth. Okay. Now, I have a provisioning profile because I need this app to be associated and the yep. app ID. 
And uh, it says, hey, you don't have one, so you create that. Again, it's the literally the only option. Pick the one that is there, yeah. P pick the one that is there. Um, so it takes a second. It's, it's doing a bunch of network calls, and boom. Oh, OK, so now I have this Visual Studio Build 2017 awesome appy uh, development uh, here. Yeah, but it says my iPhone is not registered, so there's one button, so you have to do it. So I reg no, right there, I registered my device. It got figured out all that UUID shenanigans and did it. And then it says, hey, listen, we created a provisioning profile. You registered a new device. We need to insert that. Go ahead and do that. Uh, all right, well, again, one button. Now, remember, all of this, you used to do it on the website. So. Yep. Um, and then I hit OK, and, and then I hit uh, Go. Play. Play. Run. And then I zoom in, and I like circles. And look at that pic. I mean, that is, oh, yeah. And, and cool. we're actually using that bar now to communicate a number of other capabilities. So you'll see us put uh, a lot of nice UI touches in that thing. There's something that popped up, by the way. Uh oh. Uh, oh, it needs access to my yeah, keychain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always allow whatever. That that is that. I mean, that dialogue is a little bit reminds me of the "Remember Me" check button. Oh yeah. Which never remembers me. Ever. <laughs> oh, oh, oh oh gosh. Not, don't launch Super Mario Run. Oh, it's still in debug mode somewhere. Something's happening. Anyways, it's installed. <laughs> it, deployed, it deployed to device. There we go. It deployed to device. Uh, so what happened under the hood there is a whole bunch of stuff, right? So I went in, it created this provisioning profile. There it is. It has my device associated with it. Now I'm like, I want to go to the App Store. This is going to be great. So I put it into release mode, and then I hit go, and it's all like, no, because you need a different cert for that. Um, so we're going to stop, because it's going to do a full L LLVM. Uh, so we're going to say options. And here's what's crazy, is that it's actually now smart enough, if I toggle between uh, debug and release, never done that before, but it should work. Here's my cert for the debug. If I go back into the release mode, you don't have a cert. I don't have a cert, because it's a different you know, cert and signing a different uh, thing. So just pick the first one. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, so now here's where it gets crazy. So it's going to go ahead. It's going to create this signing mm -hmm. cert. Uh, circle. This is a different circle. Mm. Yeah. Did it. Look into that. Did it. Profile. Yeah. Now I'm creating Good a provisioning one. profile for the App Store. I don't need to register my device because I can't put it on my device because. That's right. It needs to be approved by Apple, so not so for now device. Now I go here, and then I come in, and I say, let's uh, archive this puppy. Now what's going to happen at this point, it's going to take that new provisioning profile in release mode. I'm going to a device. It's going to compile up, do a full LLVM compilation, do the linker, do all this stuff. And while it's doing that, we can look at You don't have certain. to zoom out. Something's going to pop up. Something's going to pop up. So when we do oh. that, we know it's always allow. Um, OK. It's just like remember me. Now, here's what's really awesome is that we have this auto archiver. So I can go in, and it saved all of the assemblies, everything here. And when I hit sign and distribute, I can go to the App Store right from Visual Studio for Mac, and it saved everything that I just automatically provisioned in just a few minutes. And I didn't ever have to go to the portal ever, and I'm good. Very nice. Thank you, Oleg and team. <laughs> yeah, the team has been working uh, very hard on this. All right, well, we have more stuff to show. Oh, we have more uh, the stuff. There's right? more stuff. OK. Uh, PowerPoint. All right. Oh, I'm talking. So yeah. I'm a huge Android fanboy. I just am. I can't help myself. Miguel can't talk me out of it. I just love giving data everywhere to everyone and hitting always apply for everything. And I love material design. Miguel highlighted our beautiful new designers, especially in Visual Studio for Mac built from the ground up with all the new Coco awesomeness. Now, we've done a few things. Uh, SDKs, uh, if you go to the XamarinShow.com, it's a show on Channel 9 I do. I have a whole video that just tries to explain Android SDKs, how to get them. You used to have to launch this old box, all this stuff. We created our own integrated SDK manager because that's a better experience than launching some old stuff. We've integrated some brand new material design support that automatically generates your theme code, will automatically update it. We're trying to simplify and make your mm -hmm. life developer as uh, your, your life uh, better as a developer using Xamarin. Yeah, uh, essentially, so, we yeah. want to be great. If you're targeting iOS, we want to enable you to create great iOS applications. Mm -hmm. If you're doing Android, we want to enable you to create great Android applications with everything that is idiomatic on each platform. So we put a lot of work on the IDE for that 
uh, for that uh, for, for, uh, for that reason. Yeah. It's important to me because I don't want to have to jump in and out. Oh, what? How do I? That was an important thing. Miguel Miguel mm -hmm. was asking me he was, uh, to show me his demo, and he's like, "How do I change the button color?" And I go, "Button." Right, and, and that actually maps to some like crazy Android button thing, and it creates a custom thing in the theme. It's really great. And, mm -hmm. and what's nice here is I have to go to, you know, used to have to go to materialpalette.com, and I used to have to find my hex colors and do all that stuff. These are pulled directly from Google's documentation on material design. And to me, that's a huge win. I don't have to jump around and, and Google yet another thing. Yeah. Are you going to show something well, here? Or? No, I don't have oh, anything to okay. show. All right. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the other work that we're I doing could. on execution uh, modes. No, we have a lot of time to go, and, and today I'm, I'm determined to not miss the deadline like yesterday. All right. So as you know, what we do, uh, we have two execution modes uh, today. On iOS, we do full static compilation, because you cannot JIT compile on iOS. So we do full static compilation, and we throw LVM at the problem for a last step of optimization. Now, historically, Android just had the JIT compiler, which is fantastic, because you have access to everything that you love in .NET. But on the other hand, you don't generate code with a nice optimizing compiler from LVM. So we've been working to address this problem and essentially blend these worlds together. Uh, I need to show you over here. So we are bringing static compilation, AOT, ahead of time compilation to both Android and the Mac, giving us full spectrum coverage for static compilation across all platforms. And what it does is that now we take your code, we statically compile it, and we generate an executable on device that has no JIT support. Right? So you get the benefits of using the LVM heavy-duty optimizing compiler to get the best possible uh, code on device. Now, and then you're thinking, but what about the flexibility that I had before? What about the flexibility? What about that, that flexibility? That's so, what I was going to say. So you know, I love we've introduced it. a new mode called hybrid IoT. And uh, hybrid mode essentially gives you statically compiled LLVM optimized uh, natively obfuscated code, which is just annoying to decompile for your main application, but we still keep the JIT around. We still get the just-in-time compiler. So if you need to dynamically load some assembly that you downloaded or some uh, extensions or some satellite assemblies, you can do it at runtime. Or you can run things like the C Sharp run, uh, evaluator. You can do dynamic code compilation if you have to, uh, do all kinds of nice optimizations with regular expressions and so on. So that's a, a new capability that we've added. Now, let me switch to the work that we've been doing on cross-platform API. So that's what we've done on the core frameworks. Now let's talk about the APIs that we give you that allow you to write the code once and use it on every device. And this means Android, iOS, tvOS, yeah. UWP, Windows WPF, WinForm. So yeah, I would say, and, and with this, you know, it's a huge win is, mm -hmm. is as I have a session, a, a little theater session tomorrow on plugins for Xamarin, which is kind of like the platform-specific APIs, like, oh, take a photo, check connectivity. I had some in this app, right? Yes. And we've abstracted those already. And that's really community effort that's out there. But I think as I was creating these plugins, we realized that there's a whole lot more that yeah. you can do. And, some of those native capabilities aren't even exposed or available, and, and you say, well, I want to do things like, you know, draw stuff and do like a whole bunch of custom yep. stuff, like everything like Holland. I want to do like, you know, AR, VR. And the problem is you got to go learn that stuff multiple times. Yes. And, exactly. you know, .NET is your ultimate cross-platform API. Mm -hmm. So when you think of Xamarin and cross-platform development, you have this huge thing called .NET that I found a decade ago, fell in love with, made my whole career on it, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me since yeah. my girlfriend that is now the new best thing. It's the new best thing. Yeah. So let's talk about some of these things so. because these go beyond the, the, the plugins. These are relatively large investments. I want to talk about this. I talked about this last year, and they've been incredibly well received. Get it? Yeah, get mm. it. All right. Oh, there you go. So first, we heard you. You needed 2D graphics across the board. That means manipulation of bitmaps, images, scaling, vector drawing, text rendering, high quality text rendering. Uh, Bezier paths, uh, vector graphics, all of this stuff. So we have this in the form of Skia Sharp. We have coverage across every platform in the world. Neurons everywhere, server, desktop computers, everywhere. And the thing that is interesting about Skia Sharp is that Skia is the engine that powers Google Chrome. And it's also the engine that powers every pixel that goes into your Android device. Every little dot on that screen went through Skia. So we're making, we took that library and we made it available across the board on every single platform with the same API. And also, we just recently added, due to customer pressure, <laughs> that means you guys email my boss, we added SVG loading. So 
I think you guys are going to be happy about that. So you can take your SVG file and load those puppies up. And we have an entire, you showed it yesterday, a fully open source yes. Ski -a Sharp designer. Yeah, we have a kimono open source designer. I had, I had uh, Kevin on uh, to talk about how he created it. It's all open source. Yeah. It's a beautiful uh, Xamarin Mac application. And you just draw. You draw circles and shapes and import stuff, and it just like, here's the code. Here's the and it generates the code for code. you, right? So and this works in Xamarin Forms too. So it's Ski Sharp not only just works if you want to plop that in your UWP application or your Xamarin iOS app, but you can also then put it into a Xamarin Forms application, yep. and boom, one now, line of code. It does everything for you. It's bananas. So that's 2D. Now let's move to 3D because a lot of you need 3D content. Now this is a little game that we built. Doesn't matter. What matters is that now you have 3D models. You have creators up there. There's a lot of 3D content out there, a lot of 3D content that you want to use. You want to put it on your application. You want people to work with it. Maybe you want to put some models in it. Maybe you're selling cars that you want to rotate the car. Maybe you'll be in a, a shopping app. With creators update, you want to have a technology that does 3D across the board. So this, uh, this became very relevant. So we have this 3D engine called Erho Sharp. Again, goes to every single platform, every single environment. But most importantly, it goes to every AR and every VR device, from the cardboard boxes to the mixed reality that was shown today on stage and was announced a couple of weeks ago. So it is very comprehensive. We're very happy with it. I have a couple of quick videos that I want to show you. This is uh, Erho Sharp running directly in the new environment. Uh, on the mixed reality environment, the shell that, uh, that was launched a couple of weeks ago. And this is a little app that we built on HoloLens, where the application is actually using your cell phone as a lightsaber. So you use your cell phone as the controller. Um, so this is a very cool app. And it's a, it's a minimal app, right? Uh, so the Xamarin, the Xamarin app on the phone is using uh, the gyroscope yep, and tell you where it is. Yep. And it talks to the HoloLens to project this on, uh, on the screen. And I think that's important because it's not just, right, it's not just the device on your head. Yes. It's how can we connect. And you're controlling something. Or if you don't have those controllers, here's a device in your hand. We have a theater yeah. session. Uh, that talks about this, yes. or, or how sharp. And uh, I encourage you to go there, because we have beautiful workbooks and beautiful demos of this technology, how you can get uh, up and running very quickly. Same experience as the players. You start, you start coding, and this is live projecting, either on a HoloLens device or a VR device, yeah. or you can project in your PC and then take it home. The other thing that we've done is that all these devices, all these mobile devices, need to send usually a lot of data to the server. So sometimes you want to send all these data. So we brought the uh, Azure uh, libraries for IoT. These are two messaging libraries. Uh, some people have strong opinions about which ones to use, MQTT or AMQP. We support them both. The both libraries that you tend to use on these devices, we brought them to Android and iOS and every other platform. And those are message queues. These are message queues, yeah. I, 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 originally, this slide just said MQTT, AMQP. And I said, what is I that? have to Google that, I, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah. we edited this slide, and then there was a mix-up. Message mix -up. queues. And my slides got lost oh, and had no. to redo them. Yes, you, you, you didn't mm. know about this. I did not um, know about this. I like the logo, though. It is nice. It's the Azure logo. So this mm. integrates with everything that you saw today on Azure IoT. So if you need to send telemetry data, there is nothing better to use. The second piece is that we've added new IoT projects. And uh, we have a couple of them. I wanted to show a demo yesterday. We ran out of time. But essentially, you can now build IoT projects just like you build Xamarin apps for iOS or Xamarin apps for Android. We now have the same capabilities, linking, self-contained, no dependencies, take your .NET application, build it, and deploy to a target. Same experience, debugging, deployment, packaging, all in the same place, supported on Visual Studio for Windows and Visual Studio for Mac. Yep. And this is targeting Linux devices, your $2 cheap Little Raspberry Pis yes. and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have a $20 model here on the show floor somewhere. Um, so that's the other piece. Now, let's talk quickly about Xamarin Songs. Forms. We're going to talk. <laughs> Xamarin quickly. Songs unreleased. We'll talk quickly about this because we have a full session, session. on Xamarin Forms. I think I'm blocking. Yeah, right. yes, oh, oh. Um, yeah later today, uh, Jason and uh, David will be having a full kind of everything about Xamarin Forms. How many are you using Xamarin Forms to build apps? How about Xamarin Native? You're all using it because Xamarin Forms is native. So um, all of you, the rest, I assume, are mobile cool curious. Options. And yeah. they'll start to. There's so it. much. He's going to cover all of this in 60 minutes? He's going to cover uh, all of this stuff. This is very interesting work that we do. So we're not going to talk about those, but It'll I want to leave with three messages in case you don't have time to go to the other session. There's a lot in here, but there's three things that I want you to remember. Um, Forms has gone beyond its original stated goal, which was it's an API for building line of business applications. Uh, over the past year, we've done a lot of work to improve the performance and improve the capabilities to access native APIs 
from forms and improve the native capabilities. So now we have consumer applications, consumer grade applications being built entirely in forms. So I would like to officially state that we're we've crossed the we're, we've crossed from line of business Stamp to of consumer approval. apps. The second thing is that we're extending the capabilities of forms to go beyond mobile. We used to do Android, iOS, UWP, and now we're going to Mac, Windows, and Linux. Same code base across the board. Yeah, very exciting. And also Tizen, too. And Tizen. I forgot to mention Tizen. Yes. Yeah. It was a which, nice is, release which is TVs and any Samsung device. Refrigerators. Refrigerators. Toasters. Toasters. Yeah. And the last message that I wanted to, uh, to, to walk out of here uh, knowing is that now we allow you to take a page from Forms and embed it into a native app. So if you already have a native application with Xamarin, you can now take that native pa that, that, that Forms page and embed it anywhere. So this is a new capability. It works on Android, UWP, and iOS. We'll have more demos today. Yeah, it's now, awesome. It's essentially. I want to run because yeah. now we have uh, probably the most exciting announcement uh, of the day. I'm so excited. Let me introduce it. Marketing did not approve this message. We're introducing the Embedinator 4000. They couldn't approve it because it's a community effort. <laughs> but Embedinator 4000 is a future. Embedinator 4000 is the future for .NET. It means that it allows you to put .NET on every program in the world. Now, let me walk you through what the problem is. We run into a lot of situations where companies have already made an investment on a Java application, maybe on the server, or an Android application written in Java, or an iOS application written in Swift or Objective-C, or they already have a C and C++ code base. Right? So they already have made an investment, and they say, well, I don't want to rewrite this in C Sharp. And then we got to do all these hacks to P invoke and link and call back and rewrite and change the logic. So it is possible, but it's painful. So we've decided to address this problem. So what happens is <clears throat> we want you to be able to take a piece of .NET code, maybe some business logic, maybe some UI code, maybe your data synchronization. Maybe you want to talk, you want to take the document DB APIs that you already have in C-sharp, you have your, all your business logic, and you want to slap it on that Swift puppy, right? Yeah. Or you want to slap it on your Java server. So what do we do? Well, we created the Embedinator 4000. It's missing 4000 there. <laughs> so what the Embedinator 4000 does, it's, uh, it's a magical product, right, that takes your .NET code, wraps it up, packages it in the same way that Xamarin does it, links its packages, prepares it, and gives you a beautiful native library for each platform. If you're using Java, it will give you a jar. If you're using Android, it will give you a DEX, a Java DEX for, for Android. If you're using Swift, it will give you a dot framework on the platform for either Mac, iOS, or tvOS. If you're using C++, it will give you a native lib.foo.a on Unix, or it will give you a lib.a.so or dialib if you're using shared libraries. Or on the Windows platform, it will do the equivalent dot lib or DLL. And the same thing goes for Objective-C. We will be adding more languages now that we have the general framework. So we expect to add every other popular language. So you can take .NET code and slap it in in anything under the world. So you can imagine every scripting language getting some .NET love in the world. Now, the key here is that we're not just giving you, when you do the embedding, we take your .NET API and we surface it in a uh, idiomatic way for the target platform. So we generate idiomatic Java when we build into Java generate idiomatic C when we do C, idiomatic C++, idiomatic Swift, idiomatic Objective-C. And let's see this in action. So let's it's take awesome. Embedinator 4000 for a spin. I, I am, I am I'm so excited. I got to write this demo when I was writing it, and I saw it, and it was, I was just like blown away. Because uh, I've talked to so many developers that have maybe moved and said all of our new applications are written in Xamarin, but they have all these legacy projects. And they're like, how do we share code? I got to rewrite C++. No one wants to write tons of C++ ever. I wrote that. I did that. I found C Sharp. I'm good. Yeah. So here I'm inside of Visual Studio for Mac, the same exact one that I literally just showed you. And I've created a .NET project. I have a shared project. I have a Xamarin iOS library. They're just libraries. They're not apps. And what I wanted to do, you know I love weather, and you know it's probably beautiful here in Seattle, so I figure we can you know, figure out if it is. So I have some just C-sharp classes. So I have the Zam weather result, uh, temperature, city, state, text, anything I pass in. And I have this weather fetcher. 
that goes out, I can create it. It's going to call this Yahoo API to essentially pull down the weather. Uh, here I've brought in some references uh, into this project. So I have system core, JSON, XML. I could add more references uh, when I tap on that, so access any of this goodness mm -hmm. that's in here. I also have Xamarin iOS. I'll talk about that in a hot second. Uh, and I come in here, I create a web client, I download a string, I parse the JSON, and I return this result. Now, notice that I'm inside of this code, and I'm actually doing conditional checks, validation. I want to validate my data on multiple platforms uh, that are there. So I'm checking my city and state. Uh, I actually do exception <laughs> handling inside of one place, and I'm ready to go. So now you're like, all right, I got to go get the embedinator. I went to the embedinator GitHub page. How do I run it? Well, I've simplified this because I could open up a, a command uh, prompt in terminal, uh, or I could come into uh, my commands. And what I've done here is I'm going to call this Objective-C gen. So I'm going to turn this into an Objective-C library that I can consume into my iOS uh, Objective-C app. So what I do here is I say, hey, there's a DLL that's in bin debug, whether iOS.dll. I want that to be an iOS framework. Uh, put it in the output directory, and it's iOS. So I can come in now, and what I'm going to do, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, come in and, and rebuild Weather iOS. So it compiles my C-sharp code, and then I have it just run this external console, because that looks fancier. And that is Xcode compiling, as yes. you can tell. So this is going to take a few seconds to essentially compile up. And it's, what it's doing here is important, is that it's giving me a framework that can work on multiple iOS frameworks, whether it's ARM 7, ARM 7S, 64-bit, not 64-bit. And then it's going to do that first with all of the archives and then generate that framework that I can then import into Xcode. That is right. I am literally going to open Xcode. Haven't done it in seven years. Let's and let that. me add one thing. The command that, uh, that, uh, that James just showed you is a way that it's currently hooked up. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a better UI where we'll generate everything for you. You don't have to worry this. There will be a dialogue, so yeah. th don't be scared. Uh, we, we, yeah. will, we will turn this into UI. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to launch Xcode. Here it is. Uh, I already had it installed because I'm a Xamarin developer, and you got to have that puppy there. So I'm going to open up myweather.ios. And this is a standard uh, just Objective-C application. Uh, I've already hit that magical fix it button, so it should work. Um, and I have a main storyboard uh, that when I double click, you're going to see my beautiful artistic skills in storyboard form. So this is an Objective-C app. This mm -hmm. is a, an, your existing code base, right? This is what your company already invested in. Here is that beautiful right? Objective-C. Yep. Um, yep. And now here's what I want to do, is I'm going to come into the output folder that was generated, and there's tons of stuff in here. Look at all that goodness and embedination. And here's this framework. And there's a bunch of stuff in there. So to get it in, it's actually super drop dead simple. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it in here. The framework. Gonna... You drag the framework. We just generated a native iOS framework that abides by every convention of the OS. That's it. Yep. So now I'm going to come in and say, copy items, create a folder for me. Uh, bu -bu -bu. There it is. And it adds in a bunch of stuff, a bunch of header files. I have to do one more thing. I have to say, hey, it's an embedded binary. The framework, use the framework, and I'm good. So it knows to make sure it's, it's linked up, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now, what's really cool is I can come into my main view controller for that code behind. Again, some beautiful Objective-C. And but I've imported this header. Before we go here, before we go here, yes, can you yeah, show us the header? I, because I want people to appreciate how this is. Sorry, we're go synced. Ahead. I showed this to an, uh, that's not pretty. Uh, where's it at? The embedinator, is that it? Da, 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 that's not it. It's one of these bindings. It literally is in the name. Yes. So this it. is what it's generated uh, for us automatically, this header file. And when I showed it to a, a, an iOS developer, he's like, that's some pretty Objective-C. And I said, it's the first time I heard that ever. So we, we follow the platform convention. So every platform that we'll target will do what the natives do. So here's the properties. Here's that Zam weather result, the interface, everything that's inside of here is the city state. And it handles it all for me automatically. So now I'm going to come into this code behind that's here. And I have a, a click action. So I'm going to just comment in the code. Yes, I'm not going to write Objective-C live. That would be, ugh. Uh, we're going to do it. But here, it, it's, you know, uh, you got to do it from time to time. So I've registered these actions and outlets. I've, I've drawn my lines across. And I have the Zam weather fetcher. You can see I'm passing in the text field of both the city and state. I say get weather from the fetcher. I update the strings that are here. And that's it. If something goes wrong and it's null, 
That's how you do a null check. But no, notice Done. this thing. I mean, if we are mapping the constructors to really nicely name Objective-C mm -hmm. constructor, like init with city, right? We just map the constructor to this thing, yeah. right? It's, uh, it's very nice. So I come in here, and I just hit run. And I'm going to run this on an iPhone uh, simulator. It's going to be huge. Scale. It's also booted up. Uh, and essentially, it's going to take that uh, framework with all the bindings, everything that it just generated for me, and it's going to launch it right over here. So uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. There we go. So this is the UI that is existing user interface in my Objective-C application. I'll say Seattle WA. I'll say get weather. And now it's 59 degrees and cloudy, classic Seattle. This is C Sharp fetching the data. Yeah, that is that is now injected it, right? But I but 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 I think it gets better. It does get better. It does uh, get better, guys. Because it does get better. then you're like, you know what? I'm a, a C sharp developer. I would love to contribute some user interface to my applications, or even it's just a lot thing. easier to write C sharp. Yeah, it's a lot easier to write C sharp, even code behind UI. So I could take this this exact same project, put it in a Mac application, an Android, like Miguel said. But I'm, I'm interested in sharing some, some user interface. From UI code. Now, I didn't do the new forms embedding or anything like that. I, I like some, some, some code behind here. So I'm inside this iOS project, and I said, wouldn't it be cool if not only could I share .NET code, but I could access native iOS APIs inside of this library? Mm -hmm. So I have this. I have a weather view. And this is much So notice this. This at. weather view subclasses UI view. So we are subclassing a native iOS UI view. And we're creating a view, and we're going to surface it. We're going to surface it up. So I have all my views. I'm also bringing in core location. And I'm bringing in a geocoder to do a reverse geolocator mm -hmm. uh, to pull the address. So inside of here, I just create a text field. I create some labels. I'm using beautiful eventing for touch up inside events. Mm, I love it. I'm actually setting the properties of those native controls. If I go down, I have a get geolocation button. I'm going through, and whenever I update the geolocation, that's down here. I go in, I do a reverse geolocation, and then I invoke on the main thread to update the user interface. Yep, sounds good. Everything okay. there. And I have this beautiful UI stack view, which is this is the first time I've used it, mm -hmm. and it's way awesome. Uh, so I've already added this code. So here's what I'm going to do. Go back into Xcode. And now what I'm going to do is go back into my view controller. And up top, I decided to hack the planet uh, in this Objective-C. So what I'm doing here is for demo purposes. But I could essentially add this view now to anything. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here first is I'm removing anything that was in that storyboard, just for demo time. And now what I'm doing is I'm creating that new weather view. It's beautiful. I'm allocating. I'm doing init. I'm going to make uh, the frame uh, about 60 down or so. And then I'm going to add it as a sub view. So remove the current view and add it here. In general, you would just add the view. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. So now what I can do now is just run this uh, again, stop debugging. Come over here. Where's my simulator? No, yeah, simulator is the other one. Oh, there it is. Cool. This is my new user interface, completely generated from C Sharp, but also accessing native features. So if I go in and say get location, it's going to get my geolocation, output it, and say it's 65 degrees and partly right, cloudy nice. in Cupertino. If I want to ensure that my, my, uh, my Objective-C developers are happy that I put the original uh, functionality in, we'll make sure that Seattle is still 59 and cloudy, and boom, we're good to go. Now, that's really important, accessing and sharing .NET code across anywhere, but also the ability to create that iOS uh, DLL with all of your .NET and access those native features. I think that's so crucial, and I, and I simply love it, and I'm so excited. All right, thank you. Well, uh, this, uh, this is the end of our presentation. Um, we, we're very happy that you came. I think we have a minute for a question, so we can get one or two questions in uh, if they're pressing. But if you don't, you can give us a big round of applause, because that was awesome. <laughs> I will be around at the Xamarin booth uh, until about 1.30 uh, to come see all of it and, and talk to me more. <laughs>